All right, so we are going to be talking about the history of astronomy for the last roughly 250, 300 years or so. Um, and we'll be doing that by looking at some of the accomplishments that we have made and, and how we developed our understanding of the universe um, over that time frame. So you have to realize back in the 1750s, um, the heliocentric system was finally being accepted, and we did know of the all the planets out till Saturn. Um, we did not know about Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto, or the asteroid belts. We didn't know about galaxies outside of the Milky Way galaxy. We did know where we called our galaxy the Milky Way, but we didn't realize that there were other galaxies out there, and we didn't know about any planets outside of our galaxy or out or outside of our solar system. Um, we didn't know the speed of light. We didn't think that the universe was any bigger than the Milky Way. We thought the Milky Way was the entire universe. So we went from believing that, you know, the solar system was the universe to now we do believe the Milky Way is the universe. Um, and we only understood visible light. We didn't have an understanding of other types of electromagnetic waves. So those are the types of things that ha developed over the past few hundred years. Now, um, in terms of the discovery of planets, Herschel was a guy who had a really big telescope, and in 1781, he finally recognized that Uranus was a planet. Before, they knew Uranus existed, but they thought it was a comet or a background star. Um, they didn't, because it, just, it orbited so slowly, it's so far away from the sun. Um, and then the thing that was weird about Uranus is once they understood the orbit is that it didn't behave right. It was behaving really, really oddly. It was acting as if there was a large object beyond it. And so mathematically, um, they were going to, they, they calculated where this large object would be. And sure enough, um, Urban Le Verrier, or Verrier, depending on how French you want to be, um, actually determined the uh, where that planet would be and found Neptune right where it was supposed to be. So Neptune was found using math, which is actually pretty cool when you think about it. Um, Uranus was found using a telescope. Now, um, in 1801, they started searching for a planet between Mars and Jupiter. They thought there might be a planet between Mars and Jupiter. And um, sure enough, um, Giuseppe Piazzi, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, um, he's Italian, um, Anyways, he found Ceres, and Ceres is a really big, bright object, and he thought it was a new planet, so that was our 10th planet. But shortly after he found Ceres, they kept finding planets in that same region, or what they thought could be planets in that same region, and it turns out that it was a bunch of asteroids that they were finding. So they then discovered the asteroid belt at that time. Now, Ceres is not considered a full-fledged planet. Um, it went from planet to asteroid to dwarf planet. So it's a dwarf planet now, just like Pluto. Now, um, we finally found out that there were other galaxies in the 1920s. Um, in the 1700s, the time period that we're starting, uh, Charles Messier started creating a catalog of what he saw as nebula. They didn't know they were galaxies. They called them nebula. They thought they could be star clusters. Um, created a catalog that we still use today. It has over 100 objects in it. And um, so he had this wonderful catalog. Well, in 1923, Edwin Hubble took his telescope, a very powerful telescope, and looked at Andromeda. And he had a tool to be able, or he had a way, and we'll talk about how this is done at a later time, but he had a way to calculate the distance to Andromeda. And when he did, he found out that Andromeda was actually 10 times farther away than the Milky Way had been calculated big. So let's say the Milky Way was considered a mile big. It was 10 miles just to get to Andromeda. So something wasn't right there. And he realized, hey, you know what? There are other galaxies out there. And so they started looking at these objects in the Messier catalog as galaxies. So that's how we learned about other galaxies. So there were several other um, um, observations that were made in 1800 um, by Herschel, other than his 
um, discovery of Uranus, he also discovered infrared light. So infrared light is a type of light. Uh, it's actually like a heat signature that we recognize. And it was the first time we were able to identify that there was light beyond uh, that, that of the visible light that we're used to. The other thing about the electromagnetic waves that we discovered was in 1842, Christian Doppler noticed the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is when um, the, the waves of a object, whether it be sound waves or uh, visible waves or any kind of electromagnetic wave, they get crunched together or they get spread apart as that object that is emitting the wave moves. So the way it's the, the fancy way of saying it is that um, he, the frequency of an electromagnetic wave or a sound wave depends on the relative speed of the source and the observer. So what's giving it off and where you are hearing it. Um, so that's what the Doppler effect is. And that's that effect that you've heard before um, where you have the waves are crunched up as they get come towards you and they get spread out as they go away. And that is what was discovered in 1842. Now, um, there were other physics and astronomy discoveries as well. Einstein um, published his theories of relativity in, 19, in the 1900s. Um, special relativity uh, indicates the speed of light is universal and that it's constant. So it was the first time we recognized that there was a speed to light, that it was finite, which was exciting. Um, and then in 1915, he published his general theory of relativity, which states that space and time are the same thing. So you may have heard the term space-time before. It was in, in the 1900s that we finally understood that space and time were, were one. Um, they talk about that a lot in the movie Interstellar, which we'll be watching and talking about then. Um, in 1929, Hubble noticed the Doppler effect on galaxies. He noticed all these galaxies were moving away from us. All of their light was spread out and was red, so it was shifted to the red. Um, so this meant the universe was expanding. It also, um, he also noticed that the farther away the galaxies were, the faster they were moving. Now, in the 60s, we finally were able to use the electromagnetic spectrum to come up with a map of the entire universe. So this picture that you're looking at right here is a remnant of the Big Bang. This is the leftovers from the Big Bang. Um, and what happened is there were these two guys. They were working for Bell Labs. They had a great big observatory. And everywhere they pointed their telescope in the sky, they heard this noise. They couldn't figure out where this noise was coming from. They checked all the local sources. Could it be from you know a city nearby? Could it be maybe somebody left their microwave? Well, not microwave because it's the 60s. But somebody left their, their uh, radio on somewhere or something's going on. They knew something was going on and they couldn't figure out what. So so they, um, there was no source that they could find, so they went out and they noticed there was a lot of bird poop on their antenna. So they scraped the bird poop off and there was still this noise and it turned out that it was the cosmic background radiation. It's actually the leftover from the Big Bang. So the static that you see on TV and the static that you hear on the radio are from the leftovers of the Big Bang. Now, we've been able to go into space and do a lot of discovery, so I'm not going to read each one of these to you, but I'll let you take a look at the slides here. Um, starting in 1959 is when we had our first lunar missions, and those were from Russia. Um, in 1961, we went to Venus. In 62, uh, we went to Mars. Um, in 64, we went to Mercury. So starting in the early 60s is when we started looking at, um, we started looking at other planets. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them were not successful, but they were able to create some. So this one goes to the 70s. And then if you look at the next slide, we have a lot more Mars research 
that has been done. So these are the first, the first Mars rover, the first Jupiter flyby in 72. So we finally started going out to the further solar system in the early 70s. Um, and we've been exploring ever since. Um, we put rovers, our first rover was in 1996. We put our, our first rover, the United States, the first successful planet rover um, was in 1996. And then we finally made it all the way out to Pluto in 2006. Um, um, and so that's how long we've been exploring the universe. Now, you are going to be exploring one of these particular missions, not necessarily one of these missions, but a NASA mission or a European Space Agency mission or a Russian cosmonaut mission. Um, you'll be looking into those and uh, talking about some of that. So you'll be learning more about that here in just a little bit. And then the last thing I want to talk about, the last discoveries I want to talk about, are exoplanets. So we didn't know that there were planets outside of our solar system until 1995. So our first confirmed exoplanet was in 1995 around a, a star system called 51 Pegasi. It's in the constellation Pegasus. As of June of this year, or June of 2019, there are over 4,000 confirmed planets, almost 4,100, and they found almost 3,000 or over 3,000 planetary systems. Um, over 659 of them have more than one planet, which is pretty exciting. So there are a couple of different ways that we find um, exoplanets. There's the transit method, which you will actually get to experience. Um, this is when a star crosses in front of another star and it kind of eclipses some of the light so it dims the star dims a little bit and we're able to calculate the star um or calculate or determine excuse me determine there is a planet there um based off of that dimming light and um so that's the transit method and that's what we we use to find stars or to find exoplanets so what I want you to do now is go ahead and pause the video and make sure you're able to answer these questions. Please answer them on a sheet of paper in complete sentences and turn them into the tray up at the front of the room so I know that you have gotten the information down. So let me know if you have any questions. Lots of interesting information. Um, and I encourage you, please, please, please ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. So, all right. Sounds good.